On this Phantom TV feature, we meet with students, faculty, and mentors involved with the International Young Physicist Tournament. They discuss their efforts to create and solve unique scientific questions while also preparing to make their presentations on an international stage. We begin our discussion with high school science teacher, Mr. Jay Jennings, who is the supervisor. What is the IYPT and how is it a unique opportunity for Phoenixville students? So the IYPT is the International Young Physicist Tournament and it's a unique, unique opportunity because it gives students a chance to engage in actual scientific research. Uh, the, the problems that they're given are at a level of what graduate students in college would be doing and the IYPT gives them 17 problems to investigate and they're expected to make actual contributions to scientific understanding and that's pretty unique. Then once they have those solutions, they go and compete against about 30 other countries from around the world and present and debate their solutions. How, what are they doing to prepare for the competition? So the first thing that they have to do is research what's already known about their topics. And then they have to devise experiments that will lead them to new investigations. To help them with both of those parts, their students are working with mentors from the community, um, grad students from Drexel, and professors from the physics department at the University of Sciences. I understand that today is your mentor meeting. Tell me a little bit about that. And as a follow-up, how could adults from the community get involved if they're interested? Right, so the way that that works is mentors come in, and the mentors who are going to be coming in tonight aren't the ones from Drexel or University of Sciences. They're from the Phoenixville community. And so they're going to come in, and they're going to be working with the, each group of students. Right now, we have students split up into projects based on which of the problems they're investigating. So. The mentors have read up or they have an area of expertise that kind of relates to what the students are doing and they'll help them with some design issues and that type of thing. If other people from the community want to get involved, they should just give me an email. Um, they could also just contact Dr. Parkinson, he could probably um, set them up. And we do have an email address which is usiypt at pasd.com. Sounds good. Now I understand that there are numerous amounts of challenges about funding and everything. Tell me a little bit about what they are. Right, well the biggest issue is we have to get to Thailand. And that's pretty expensive. So we're trying to make it so that the best students get to go, not just the ones who can afford it. And so we're trying to raise enough money to make sure that everybody from the team who qualifies gets to go. That means that ideally we would raise about $50,000. What have you enjoyed most about this process? It's been really exciting for a couple of reasons. One, it's allowed us to reach out to members of the community and colleges that we wouldn't have normally reached out to. And so it's giving the students an opportunity to interact with people who are working in fields related to what they might actually want to go into doing. The other thing is, it's just really neat to see the kids figuring things out for themselves. Sounds like a great club. Thank you so much. Thanks. Aaron Westerman is one of the many students from the physics club. His experiment involves magnets. In your perspective, what has been neat about working with IYPT? Well, I've loved the opportunities that IYPT has gotten me to work with really smart people who go to our school. And I've actually gotten a lot of experience in meeting other professors who work at the university level. And so we went to the University of the Sciences recently, and I got to meet a lot of people there. And they were really smart, and they really helped me get um, a larger sense of, like, what we're doing as a whole, like how much of like an impact it has, and like a lot of people really care about it. So my project, it's a Gauss rifle, which uses magnets to make balls move faster, and we're, we're hoping to optimize the, the rifle so that we can see how magnets interact and understand them better, and hopefully from this, we can apply it to other things in life. For example, the same technology that's used in glass rifles um, is used in roller coasters and other things. And so having a better understanding of this can have many applications to other things that we use in everyday life. As someone who's involved with science and physics, what are some of the innovations that are going to be upcoming in the future, you think? Um, so there's a big emphasis on more gas efficiency, like getting off of our um, dependency on oil. And so I've heard of quite a few things about like um, there's this new thing that's being researched um, I think it's in Japan but I might not be right um, hydrogen cars are something I thought were really cool and um, they seem feasible but I'm not like an expert on it I'm just some high school student so 
but they, they really do sound interesting, and I think that they might be something that we see in the future. It's been great talking to you. Thank you so much. Thank you. As one of the leaders of the club, Olivia Teeter is excited about the possibilities that IYPT presents. From your perspective, what has been neat about working with IYPT? IYPT is interesting in its way because it's all experimental and in the classroom you're learning all the theory, but this is an opportunity to investigate and experiment for yourself. Tell us about your project or your experiment that you're doing for the competition. I'm in charge of investigating why clothes look darker when they're wet and it's kind of practical in the sense that we can relate to it and we've seen it every day and the implications of it are kind of cool as far as why when you sweat it looks darker and stuff like that. What are some of the challenges with your experiment? The challenges I face are that there's a lot of theories uh, explaining but there's not one that is has a consensus, so that's what I'm investigating and trying to figure out that one main reason. Mary Kraus, a 2010 graduate of Phoenix Luria High School and recent graduate from Cornell University, is among the mentors involved with assisting the students. Like the students, she is also interested in tackling complex questions. Tell us about the role of being a physics mentor. Um, well, I'm trying to help share my knowledge, obviously, and. I have a little bit more experience, so I can come up with some of the problems and some of the solutions that other people might not know about. But I'm just here to help any way I can. What motivated you to come join the club and do this? Well, I graduated in 2010, and I really loved physics and physics Olympics. And I heard about the program in they're going to Thailand, and it sounded really, really excited. Exciting, and the problems are really, really interesting for the International Physics Olympiad. So I wanted to help out. What are some of the challenges that you encounter when you're working on the project for the IYPT competition? Well, the project that I'm helping with is they're trying to figure out how random packing happens with non-spherical particles. And it's actually a really challenging project in that there have been quite a few research papers done on this subject with M&Ms and things like that. In modeling, it is rather difficult um, using computer simulations. So I'm trying to help create a computer simulation, and I'm also trying to help out with um, doing the actual experiments and collecting the data that way, too. Yet another club member, Andrew Magabat, is working on a project with his teammates that involves levitation. What's something that you're going to take away from this club? Um, what I'm really going to take away from this experience is the fact that I'm working with the team. My group members, Vanessa Callahan and James LeBron, really have good insight on what we have to do for our project. And it also helps me collaborate with our group and it makes me see a different side of how a project is completed and how a question is answered. Tell me a little bit about your project and the challenges of it. Um, our project is we're supposed to investigate the parameters of a low friction state on a CD hovercraft. So we uh, put a balloon over a CD and um, that will inf put air in between the ground and the CD and then what that does is creates a low friction state and our job is to investigate different ways that we could increase that or decrease the time that it's low friction. How do you think this project and the club will benefit you in your future? I think it will benefit me because, as I said before, it really helps me work with the team. I get to understand a little bit more how physics works and more of a hands-on experience on how things happen and why they happen. Carl Seawick is yet another student picky. involved with IYPT. He and his group are working on a theory about the curving of light. From your perspective, what has been neat about working with IYPT? Um, well, the IYPT has been a very interesting experience for me because it's virtually research at a graduate level, especially for my project, which has had very little research in the scientific field done on it. So just the possibilities of what I can do with what I'm researching and what I've learned from what I'm researching. The topic that my project is uh, directed upon ha is not really, we're not taught much about it in physics at the high school, so I'm learning a lot of stuff that I haven't really focused on before and I'm, it's kind of interesting to understand more of the world around me and light 
which is a main focus on my project. Um, so, yeah. Tell me a little bit, what is your project? Um, so our project, uh, it deals with what's referred to as a circle of light, where you project a laser to diffract around a thin wire, like a very thin copper, or any, any material wire. And what happens is if you turn off all the lights and you look at it, it creates a circle around the wire um, projected onto any screen. So if you project it onto a screen here, it'll create a circle like that. And if you pro project it down, it creates a more smaller circle. And we're trying to understand why it does this and what we can do to mess with the angle, the laser wavelength, and different materials and see what we find out from it. So, How do you think this experience and this project will benefit you in your future? Um, well, it's been said that this project has had virtually no research done on it. So if I find any valuable scientific contributions, it's possible that I could be recognized for that. Um, I feel that my, abil my ability to argue my findings on this project will help me in future time when I'm trying to present my ideas for other findings that I may find. And just, I think it's a great, great thing to be able to do such high level research at such a young age in high school where it's not really a feasible thing in most places. Thank so. you so much. You're welcome.